the results of the Hebrew class led Mendel to propose a set or a second set of generalization and that is called law of independent assortment. So the law of independent assortment is based on dihedral class. Now before entering into the law of independent assortment, we have to know something about dihedral class. What is a dihedral class? A dihedral class is a combination of two single crosses and both the single crosses are operating together. One cross that is round and wrinkled, another cross yellow and green. So it is nothing but a combination of there is two monohybrid crosses. There is what I mentioned two single crosses. One cross between round and wrinkled, another cross between yellow and green. We are getting the phenotypic ratio in both the cases 3 is to 1. Now I am taking this dihedral cross, taking together both the paths of contrasting characters. So round yellow and wrinkled green what is studied. In the F1 we are getting round yellow. Now how many round individuals are produced? Now if we are taking actually two places we have the round character. See 9 plus 3, 12 round. Round and round. These are the dominant characters. So in two places we have the dominant characters expressed. And similarly we are taking yellow. Here just once again 9 plus 3, 12. 12 individuals are yellow colored. Now what about the recessive characters? If we are taking the recessive characters, for example green. In two places we are getting green. That is 3 plus 1, that is 4. 3 plus 1, 4. And also in two places we have, that is, the regular condition, the recessive character. So 4. 4. So 12 is to 4. So if we are taking, for example, the round, that is 12, ringle 4. So round in this class, we are getting 12, ringle we are getting 4. So we are reducing the ratio what we are getting 3 is 4. So I mean, yes, that's why we mentioned about a combination of two single classes. We are getting the same monohybrid phenotypic ratio here too but the number is multiple sub 3. So 12 round and 4 wrinkle. If we are reducing the ratio we are getting 3 is to 1 the phenotypic ratio. Similarly if we are taking for example yellow, green, Again, yellow the dominant character 12 in number and the green just become 4. Again, we are getting the ratio 3 is to 1. So, it is nothing but the multiples of monohybrid cross ratio 3 is to 1, just we have 4 actually the damage are produced. If you are multiplying that is 3 is to 1 by 4, we are getting what is called 12 is to 4. So, totally 9 plus 3, 12 individuals are produced in round case. And similarly for L, 9 plus 3, these two, we are getting 12 individuals. And if we are taking the recessive characters, wrinkle 3, 1, 4. Then if we are taking green, you see that one, 3 plus 1, 4. So we are making the ratio between one pair of characters, the shape, another one between the color. In both the cases, we are getting 12 is to 4, reduced to 3 is to 1. So this is you have to understand and dihybrid is nothing but a combination of two single crosses operating together. First Mendel did monohybrid cross between round and wrinkle. The second one he did yellow and green that is another monohybrid cross and taking two characters together simultaneously for a dihybrid cross. What is independent assortment? When two pairs of traits or characters are combined in a hybrid, the segregation of one pair of factors assault independently of other pair of factors and other pair of characters. I will repeat one second. So when two just actually a pair of contrasting characters combine in a hybrid, the segregation of one pair of characters is independent of other pair of characters. Here I am taking one pair of characters, what is called the round. 
another one wrinkle. This is one pair of characters. And take another pair of characters, what we have? Yellow and green. These are another pair of characters. So these two characters are combined together in a hybrid by the segregation of one pair of characters. That is round and wrinkle is independent of other pair of characters for color. This is called yellow and green. This is possible because the genes are present on different chromosomes. The law of independent assortment is possible only when the genes are present in different chromosomes. That's why you can say, law of independent assortment is not universal. The meaning for that one, it is not applicable for all the characters of an organism. But in the case of mental, what he has chosen the characters and now this law is applicable. So it is not universal, it is not applicable for all the characters. Now the two characters normally just actually segregate independent of one another. As a result, during meiosis, we are getting two different types of gametes produced by these two parents. One with capital R Y, another one with capital R small. I mentioned just actual law of independent assortment with reference to what is called the F1 hybrid, not with reference to the homozygous pure breeding varieties. Now, when you are taking the heterozygous individual for dihybrid, here the genes are present on different chromosomes. I mentioned earlier, see, the gene form that is color of the cotyledon, so this is one pair of chromosomes. The gene for the color of the cotton is located in the first chromosome. So maybe this is what we have the gene for that is a color of the cotton. Sorry, the color of the cotton that is capital Y, small y. The gene for that what we have with reference to that is the shape of the seed present in the fifth chromosomes. I made a mistake, that is in the seventh chromosome. Not in the fifth chromosome, it is in the seventh chromosome. So, this is what will come, capital R, small one. So, the gene for shape of the seed located in the seventh, the gene for the color of what is called the cotyledon located in the first. So, as they are formed in different chromosomes, there is a possibility of joining or recombining in a different manner. I mentioned already, the Y may combine with what is called capital R or may combine with the small one. Similarly, the small way may combine with capital R or may combine with the smaller. This is called independent assortment. So what we are using FOIL method in mathematics. So capital may combine with the capital R or smaller. So we are getting two gametes. And similarly, the small way may combine with the capital R smaller. So the inheritance of one pair of character is not affected by another pair of character. As a result of this one, we are getting four different types of gametes. We see that one because of meiosis, four different combinations of what is called the factors occur in gametes. One with capital R Y. So each one is with the 25 person. So four different types of gametes are produced in equal numbers. So R Y, capital R Y, capital R small Y, small R, capital Y, and small R, small Y, all the gametes produced. This is because of independent assortment, not because of crossing over. I mentioned once again, it is not possible or applicable for all the characters. Here only it is applicable. So, law of independent assortment is not universal. It is based on the results of monohybrid cross. Significance of independent assortment. Number one, it results in genetic diversity. Genetic diversity. So the meaning for that one, we can have individuals with the different kinds of combinations of genes, different what is called the genotypes. This is called genetic diversity. Different organisms different individuals are produce different kinds of rice, different kinds of mangoes. These are all the results of actually genetic diversity. The second one, if an individual produces dissimilar gametes, 
it is due to the consequence of independent assortment. So, production of dissimilar gametes. Production of dissimilar gametes. By an organism, it is due to the law of independent assortment, uh, simply due to independent assortment. I am taking that one, simply independent assortment. This is the second one. Now, by means of law of independent assortment, or by means of independent assortment, or because of independent assortment, we have the maternal and paternal members of all the parents, the maternal and just a met, the maternal and paternal members of all the parents were distributed into gametes. So that we have received different chromosomal combinations leading to genetic variation. So, genetic variation. Through independent assortment, the paternal and maternal members of all parents were distributed into gametes so that we have received chromosomes of different combinations that results in genetic variation. So chromosome combinations of different types produce which results and which leads to genetic variation. Then in sexually reproducing organisms we have we see that one the different types of combinations occur. Sexually reproducing organisms we have normally different types of combinations occur leading to genetic variation. This is because of that is independent assortment. We can say in this way, in sexually reproducing plants and organisms, through independent assortment, once again genetic variation takes place. Genetic variation takes place in sexually reproducing organisms because of what is called actually independent assortment. So these are the four significance or advantages of independent assortment but one disadvantage what I mentioned it is not universal it is not applicable now what is the difference between law of segregation and law of independent assortment just one statement I want to make difference so difference between one law of segregation and law of independent assortment. I make it in a simple way. Now law of segregation is concerned with a pair of alleles of a single gene. So it is concerned with pair of alleles of a single gene. So for the genes or for the alleles of a single gene, segregate. It is concerned with pair of alleles of a single gene. Whereas law of independent assortment is concerned with, actually it deals with the relation between the two genes. It deals with the relationship or relation between two genes. How far the genes are interacting together in what way they are responsible for the expression of the characters. So this is the difference between law of segregation law of independent assortment. So it is considered the pair alleles of a single gene. For example, character D small gene. It deals with the relationship between two genes. For example, round and then yellow like that. Now it is based on monohybrid cross. It is based on monohybrid cross. So it is based on the results of dihybrid cross. Based on the results of I am simply writing based on dihybrid cross. based on dihybrid cross. That's the major difference between the law of segregation and the law of independent assortment. Now let's talk about the molecular explanation of round and regular seeds. 
How far these characters are produced? This is because of the gene action in you know, that one. That is called the molecular explanation. Now, in the case of seeds, there is an enzyme. What is called starch? That is branching enzyme. Starch branching enzyme. This is called SVE. SVE one. Starch branching enzyme. That means starch exists in two forms. Either in the form of a linear chain containing amylose or in the form of branched chain containing amylopectin. Now the branched chain is because of the enzyme starch branching enzyme 1 that is SBE1. Now this SBE1 is being produced when the seed matures and this enzyme is encoded by the gene the dominant allele or gene. So any actually normal type is called as a void type. Any normal type is called as a void type. After mutation, the resultant type is called mutant type. Now this ROM is a void type. Its allele is capital. This R gene encodes for the gene, so it encodes for the enzyme. That is starch branching enzyme 1. It is a protein. See now the genes are expressing in the form of proteins. Now the enzymes are nothing but proteins. Now in the case of normal ROM6, the R allele produces what is called an enzyme. The enzyme converts the linear and branched starch amylose into branched starch. That is called amylopectin. That results in structurally small surface receipts. This is because of the gene expression resulting in the production of enzyme. This is the gene produces this one. Now, when this gene R is interrupted by a small segment or piece of DNA with a size of 0 0.8 kilobytes, it refers to the number of pieces. So we are taking the gene. The gene is normally this one. It is being interrupted. Its function is interrupted. By inserting, there is a small segment of DNA, a small piece of DNA. The size of the DNA is about 0 0.8 kilobase. So when it is inserted, what will happen? The dominant gene gets mutated to form LCC gene small r. Okay, this is happening. This is because of the insertion of a small segment or piece of DNA of size 0 0.8 kb. So that the function of the gene is interrupted. It's being mutated to form a mutant and it's small R. Now, the seeds with the word is called actually this small R gene. What's happening? Now, such seeds, namely the English seeds, store large amount of sucrose. Large amount of sucrose. These seeds at maturity store large amount of sucrose with a high water content. High water content. High content of water. Because of this mutant allele, now the seed stores large amount of sucrose and high content of water. Now that results in increase in osmotic pressure. So that what is happening? The cell loses water. When it matures, it loses water. First it absorbs water. When sucrose and high content of water is present, what is happening? Now the seeds absorb more water. But at the time of maturity, when it matures, it loses water as it dries. When it matures, because of the drying effect, it loses water. So, the seeds become wrinkled. So, there is no production of what is called the enzyme. So, there is no conversion of its amylose into amylopectin. Then, it causes the accumulation of more sucrose and high content of water in the seeds. When the seeds matures, so normally because of that one osmotic pressure increases, more water is absorbed. But when the seed matures, it loses water and as it dries. So that the surface of the seed becomes wrinkled. Then what about the RG? So in the case of there is a dominant allele capital R, it is able to just synthesize an enzyme what is called starch branding enzyme 1. Now, this enzyme causes a conversion of amylose into amylopectin and insoluble starch, which is highly branched. 
Now it is having what is called osmotic balance and minimizes the water loss. There water loss occurs as the seed matures, but here the seeds are having osmotic balance. This is because of what is called the conversion to aminopectin, the carbohydrate, a branched starch. So that what is happening, it minimizes the loss of water. So there is no water loss. In the case of ringle seeds, there is a water loss at the time of drying of the seed when it matures. But again, there is no loss of water because it is having osmotic balance. So the seed is having structural smooth surface that results in what is called the round seeds. So ringle seed is because of the water loss as the seed dries because of the absence of enzyme starch branching enzyme one. So there is no conversion of amylose to amylo pectin. So when amylose is there, it increases the osmotic pressure. As a result, the seed that is loses water when matures as the seed dries. So this is a molecular expansion or explanation of row and ringle seeds, how far these two seeds are expressed. We have already studied monohydrate test cross. Now we have to study dihydrate test cross. What is test cross? We have seen already crossing of an individual of unknown genome type with the homozygous recessive parent. Here unknown genome type possibly in other than heterozygous or homozygous. Homozygous. Now, the main purpose of test cross is to find out the heterozygosity of hybrids. So, we are taking what is called the heterozygous individuals for that cross. Now, what is dihybrid test cross? Crossing of an individual with unknown genotype differing in two paths of characters with a homozygous double recessive pair. Homozygous double recessive pair. The meaning for the one we are taking just the two recessive characters together. One is ringle, another one is green. Double recessive pattern, and both the characters are recessive in nature, controlled by that is a recessive allele of small r and a recessive allele of small y. Okay, now we are starting with the experiment as we have started in the case of diagonal cross, crossing the parental combination, round yellow homozygous and regular yellow. Now the gametes produced by this round yellow that is known as seeds, all the gametes are similar with the capital R, capital Y, that means the dominant elements for shape of the seed and the color of the cotton. And similarly, all the gametes produced by this pair, having the genotype that is recessive allele for R and the recessive allele for Y. They also produce the same gametes, similar gametes, having one recessive color for ringle seed and one recessive gene for that is green color. Now the union of these two gametes result in F1 generation of heterozygous individual. Phenotypically this is round yellow. But we do not know the genotype of that organism. To find out the genotype of the organism, we are doing what is called the test cross. Here, an individual of unknown genotype, possibly the F1 hybrid, with a double recessive homozygous pair. Double recessive. Now, the gametes produced by this heterozygous dominant individual, as a rule, you know, because of independent assortment, four types of gametes are produced. But for the recessive pattern, only one type of gametes produced because the genes are similar. So these are the four gametes produced possibly the male parent and just four gametes which are similar by the recessive parent. So all the four gametes are similar in the case of recessive parent. Now here in the case of dominant parent, four gametes are produced in equal numbers. Now I represent the same in the form of a checkered board. Now through checkered board, let us analyze the nature of the individuals produced when making a cross between a heterozygous dominant that is round yellow and a homozygous recessive that is wrinkled green. Now there are four types of gametes are produced by heterozygous parent and only one type of gamete produced by the double recessive homozygous parent that is small or small y. So we have the probability 1 into 4. 
So this gamete has a chance of fertilizing this one, this one, that one, that one. So we are getting only possible individuals in the next generation, there is only four. Now, as a result of the cross, we have received the following genotype. One with heterozygous, what is called wrong, then yellow heterozygous, and then heterozygous wrong, then homozygous green, then here homozygous wrinkle and heterozygous yellow, and here both the genes are in homozygous condition. So the probability of genotype is 1 is to 1 is to 1 ratio. Not only that, if we are taking the phenotype, we are getting round yellow, round green, wrinkled yellow, and wrinkled green, all are being produced in equal percentage of 25. So here also the phenotypic ratio 1 is to 1 is to 1 is to 1. So if in a hybrid class, the phenotypic ratio and the genotypic ratio obtained is 1 is to 1 is to 1 is to 1, then the nature of the dominant parent involved is heterozygous dominant for two characters. And we know that one. So its main purpose of diabetes test cross is to find out the nature of the heterozygosity of hybrid. So whether it is actually heterozygous or not, if it is a heterozygous, definitely you can get this ratio of 1 is to 1 is to 1 is to 1. And equally of 25%, 25%, 25%, 25% in each character. So this is what we have in the case of test cross. In monohydrate test cross, we are getting the ratio 1 is to 1. In the case of diabetic test cross, the ratio is, you see that 1, 1 is to 1 is to 1 is to 1 is to 1. That's why I say, if in a hybrid cross, the phenotypic ratio and the genotypic ratio obtained is 1 is to 1 is to 1 is to 1, then the dominant parent involved in that cross is a heterozygous dominant for two characters. And we have the recessive, the parent nature, double recessive, double recessive, that to homozygous double recessive. This is a question also. If we are getting this ratio, then we can say that one, the parents involved are heterozygous dominant and homozygous double recessive. Then only we are getting the ratio of 1 is to 1 is to 1 is to 1. So this is about what we have the test cross. Unlike the monohydrate test cross, there we are getting one is one only because we are getting only two phenotypes. But here we are getting four phenotypes also. We have the ratio one is to one is to one is to one. Okay, this is about the dihybrid. Then we have to go for other characters. What we have related to one more cross, the trihybrid cross in the next class.